The MiG-25 and SR-71 are natural enemies. Only they can catch up with one another, and any other jet that tries to do so would simply be left in the dust. Or, in this case, their smoke. So like Messi vs. Ronaldo, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, there's also the MiG-25 vs. the SR-71 rivalry, a rivalry that has lasted over 50 years. And so in this video, we finally put an end to it. Which is the ultimate speed machine, and why current fighter jets can't reach their speed? MiG-25 vs. SR-71 The SR-71, also known as the Blackbird, is a reconnaissance jet powered by two Pratt & Whitney J-58 axle flow turbojet engines. It was developed by the Lockheed Corporation's Skunk Works Division for the United States Air Force and NASA. It was primarily used to gather intelligence on the activities of the Soviet Union. Packed with enough stealth tech to make it virtually invisible to radar and powerful engines to sprint out of existence, the SR-71 was an invincible spy plane, but not for long. The Soviet Union knew better than to allow the US to have any level of air dominance for an extended period. And so they went to drawing boards of their own to begin the development of their most secret aircraft ever at the time, with a focus on one thing alone, speed. They needed an aircraft of their own that could match the SR-71 in a drag race and deal some serious damage to it. And so, the MiG-25, aka Foxcat, was born. It was contracted to the Soviet Union's Mikoyan Gurevich Bureau, and it happened to be the last aircraft the founder of the Bureau designed before he retired. The MiG-25 is powered by two R-15 B-300 single-shaft turbojets. It was built primarily of stainless steel to handle the thermal stress that came with speeds above Mach 2. As steel isn't exactly a model radar-absorbing material, it became quite clear to the US that the Soviet Union wasn't big on stealth and simply wanted supersonic brutes in the sky to take down their blackbirds, which led to some serious brain-racking and concerns in the US camp. A miracle then arrived in 1976 in the form of Soviet pilot Viktor Belenko, who defected to the US via Japan with his MiG-21. The US wasted no time digging into the fighter to fully know its capabilities, only to discover some weaknesses that made the MiG-25 less of a contender than they thought it was. The MiG-25 was a supersonic fighter capable of speeds of over Mach 3.2. However, it was limited to Mach 2.83 because moving at its top speeds could result in permanent damage to the aircraft. For the Blackbird, reaching Mach 3 speed was a breeze, and so it easily outran every missile that was shot at it. As a result, it never went down to enemy fire, even when it was up against the MiG-25. Its stealth also came into play to make it difficult for Soviet pilots to keep track of it especially when it was out of direct sight. However, with no primary weapons of its own, the Blackbird was all defense and no attack. So the MiG-25s weren't exactly in danger of it. In fact, if the MiG-25 limitations were fixed, it could, in theory, catch up with the SR-71, and combined with its ammunition, which SR-71s had none of, the MiG-25 was considered more practical and effective by many. It also didn't help much that the Blackbird cost a fortune to maintain, and took so much time to recover after every mission. For the US Air Force though, it was always worth the wait as the probability of mission success was never low. This makes one wonder why they never spent much time or resources bringing their current fighters up to speed, Mach 3 speed that is. Well, it turns out that there's actually a genius reason behind that. Over time, the top speeds of modern aircraft have been on a solid decline. As unprogressive as that may sound, it really isn't. Modern warfare would simply not be about individual planes competing to look more blurry and take one another out of the sky. And even if it was, supersonic speeds were never much of help in attack anyways. So instead of building aircraft to peek into foreign affairs and sprint away in fear once spotted, resources were focused more on stealthy, highly maneuverable aircraft that would be far more difficult to detect. And once detected, would be able to dance around the opposition and deal some damage of its own. To accomplish this, Mach 2 speeds had to go because they required too much restructuring that would have made fighters less lethal at subsonic speeds. And according to studies, jets were mostly operated at subsonic speeds even if they had supersonic capabilities. Only aircraft that could handle supersonic speeds without trading off lethality would ever reach Mach 3 speeds in the future. And with heat-resistant structures, 
complex intakes and low bypass engines, it seems six generation fighters such as the NGAD aircraft, MiG 41, and Tempest might be just the thing. As a result, they might soon be replacing five of the most spectacular subsonic fighters the world has ever seen. Nevertheless, let's look at some of the fastest and most lethal fighter jets in the world. Number 1. F-15 Eagle Mach 2.5 The F-15 Eagle is an American all-weather twin-engine tactical fighter that served as McDonnell Douglas' proposal to the United States Air Force after they requested a dedicated superiority fighter in the late 1960s. It had its first flight in 1972 and was introduced into service four years later in 1976. The F-15 was used primarily by the air forces of the United States, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. The fighter remains in active service to this day and continues to dominate with 100 victories and no recorded losses in aerial combat. It remains one of the most successful fighters in modern history. Number 2. Su-27 Flanker Mach 2.35 The Su-27 Flanker was designed by Sukhoi for the Soviet Union to counter American fourth-generation fighters, particularly the F-14 Tomcat and F-15 Eagle. And with heavy ordnance, sophisticated avionics, high maneuverability, and a remarkable 1,900-mile range, it was more than up to the task. The Su-27 took to the skies for the first time in 1977 and entered service in 1985. It has been operated by 14 different nations around the world, surprisingly including both the United States and China. Number 3. MiG-29 Fulcrum Mach 2.3 The MiG-29 Fulcrum was another twin-engine fighter developed by the Soviets to counter American fourth-generation fighters. With its Su-27 cousin by its side, both the F-15 Eagle and the F-16 Fighting Falcon had something to worry about. Thanks to its precision munitions and air-to-surface armaments, the MiG-29 remains one of the most lethal fighters to come out of Soviet borders. It had its first flight in 1977 and was introduced into service in 1982. The fighter has served more than 30 different nations and it remains a primary fighter for Russia, India, Uzbekistan, and Iran. Number 4. Chengdu J-10 Mach 2.2 the Chengdu J-10 is China's entry to this list. Its destructive nature earned its nicknames such as Vigorous Dragon and Firebird. The J-20 is a single-engine, lightweight, multi-role fighter, performing effortlessly well in whatever weather nature throws at it. The J-10 was produced by the Chengdu Aircraft Corporation for the People's Liberation Army Air, aka the Chinese Air Force. The J-10 is China's go-to for air-to-air -air combat and strike missions. It had its first flight in 1998, and entered service seven years later in 2005. It has remained in active service since then. Number 5. F-22 Raptor Mach 2.0 The F-22 Raptor is the world's first fifth-generation fighter. Developed by Lockheed Martin for the United States Air Force, it is a single-seat, twin-engine, all-weather, stealth tactical fighter that makes a statement. Combining the pros of high maneuverability, stealth, advanced avionics, and aircraft crippling ammunition, the F-22 Raptor isn't one to play with. The F-22 had its first flight in 1997 and entered service in 2005. It is slated to be replaced by the fighters of America's NGAD family of aircraft, but it remains a prized possession to the nation. So much so that there's a law that prevents it from being sold or exported, even to allied nations. It's pretty clear that these fighters are good sport, competing with one another and bullying the rest keeping their respective air forces ahead. At a point though, staying ahead meant having jets that could travel at speeds the human eye couldn't keep up with. And so thanks to the SR-71, the United States was able to stay ahead of Russia. And thanks to the MiG-25, Russia was able to stay ahead of the rest of the world, literally. So let's all give a massive thumbs up to the United States, Russia, and this video. <laughs> yes, this video. Well, if you learned a thing or two from it, might as well give it a like, right? And if you're feeling generous, subscribe to the channel and allow us to notify you when new videos are released. By the way, what do you think happened to the Soviet pilot that defected with the MiG-25? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.